First off, we need to make a distinction between superpowers and comic book powers, and there is a difference. So let's define the word super. A prefix occurring originally in Latin loanwords, meaning with the basic meaning above and beyond. So Superman's flight, Cyclops' eye beams, and the Flash's speed are all superpowers, but they're only comic book powers. To run with super speed, the Flash needs a multitude of secondary comic book powers to be able to sidestep our laws of physics. He would need to be able to accelerate faster than gravity would allow. He would need super deceleration to keep from pacing himself onto a wall. And he would need the ability to ignore air resistance to keep from burning up in our atmosphere. Within our laws of physics, the Flash could not exist. Thus, he is comic book. To be able to dodge our laws of physics, the Flash needs to access something called the Speed Force, something our universe does not have. Another example is flight. There's many different forms of flight throughout comic books, but very few are realistic. Everyone knows that Superman can fly. But how does he fly? Superman can generate some unexplained force from his body that allows him to hover, change flight direction, and change flight speed. There really is no canonical explanation on how he can do this. Except, in the 1940s, when animating the Superman cartoon, the Flesher brothers found it way too difficult to keep animating Superman leaping over great buildings um, in a single bound. So, they contacted DC and made a request that they change his power set to flight. Throughout the Silver Age, writers gradually increased his power set, eventually allowing him to travel to distant worlds, galaxies, even across universes with relative ease. So while classifying certain powers as comic book and other powers as more realistic might narrow my presentation, I still don't have enough time to cover the range of abilities available. So I'm gonna focus on two points, communication with technology and superhuman abilities. So let me paint a mental image. You step into a machine, and as it closes itself around your body, a screen lights up. This screen displays your heart rate, what's behind you, and your ammo count. The system calibrates and on your command, takes off. A fully loaded exoskeleton that reads your reactions and responds to your body. Are you Tony Stark? Nope, you're Kurogo Karatis, the inventor of the Karatis exoskeleton. This exoskeleton is the first step towards Iron Man suits and Gundam mechs. Notice, regardless of the control scheme, you can operate this Karatis mech with your iPhone. You can take primary control, a master slave function, or even operate it over a 3G network. A suit like Iron Man's, though, is still a futurist notion, because the arc reactor that powers his suit is estimated to give off the energy of three nuclear power plants. If we could generate 36.6 billion kilowatt uh, hours of energy in a hockey puck-sized item, having superpowers would be the least of our concern. <coughs> but instead of interacting with machinery, why not become machinery? Cyborg, a lesser known superhero, is exactly that, a cyborg. Raised under scientific parents, Cyborg was the a test subject of various intelligence enhancement projects. One day while visiting his parents in the lab, a experiment goes awry, as they often do in comic books, leaving Victor's, mother's Victor's mother dead and himself mortally wounded. In an effort to save his son's life, Victor's dad grafts experimental technology onto his son, giving Victor a new lifestyle and identity. Victor was introduced in 1980, a time when bionic transplants were only a fantasy, the most notable being the $6 million man. We have come leaps and bounds from prosthetic limbs that only mimic human functions. The earliest known prosthetic dates back between 910 and 750 BC. Nearly 3,000 years later, Dr. Van Getty produces a limb that responds to muscle contractions and muscle movements. Just last year, Jan Sherman, paralyzed from the neck down, was taught to use a motorized limb using only her brain signals. And then later this year, we will be transplanting a hand that actually allows amputees to feel what they're touching. We are on the verge of a new generation of prosthetics with sensory perception. These limbs can redefine the term human. Already we have problems with the legality of amputee athletes performing in the Olympics. If someone like Victor did exist and we were able to use current technology to replace his biological body parts, 3D print various organs and craft metallic attachments that respond to his brain signals, would he still be human? And if he is human and people weren't able to upgrade their bodies due to financial reasons, religious issues, or otherwise, would they start to drift towards subhuman? And if he's not human, is Jane Sherman with her vast paralyzation superhuman? 
This brings me to my next point, superhuman powers. Instead of having hydraulic arms, why not hulk out and gain more muscle mass? Instead, there's no need for external memory if you have perfect memory recall. If our organs didn't decay or a healing factor was involved, we would have no use for hospitals other than giving us these powers. These th superhuman abilities are already showing up in our populations. There is a baby born in Germany with a mutant DNA segment that blocks a protein called myostatin. This protein inhibits muscle growth. Scientists are already testing blocking this protein in mice, and we already use this protein to our advantage in the cattle industry, but never before had it been seen in humans. This baby could lift six times more weight than the average baby his age, and it's unknown how strong he will actually become. Dean Carnassus is an American long distance runner capable of superhuman feats of endurance. Dean has run over 50 marathons, one in each state, over 50 consecutive days. He's even run 350 miles over three sleepless nights. After his 50 marathon streak, Dean was tested. It was found that not only do his muscles damage less with exercise, but eventually they stop being damaged altogether. Studies also found that he has increased blood flow in his circulatory system, which allows, if he stays hydrated, for him to run at a seven to 10 minute mile pace forever. These are only two examples I can fit into my time presentation. There are people out there that recall every detail of every day of their lives, a community of blind people that use echolocation to navigate, even naturally born geniuses and savants. If these abilities are naturally occurring or taught, who's to say we couldn't combine these traits into a single person? Regardless of the nature of their powers, the X-Men have always remained my favorite comic book heroes. I've had a variety of favorites throughout my graphic novel career, but mutant-based powers have always been my favorite. As I've read the timeline and have become acquainted with the various ideologies of what Homo sapiens superior would mean for regular old humanity, I've come to realize something. This species isn't fighting for the right to use their superpowers, these humans are fighting for the right to use their natural abilities. As I've shown, our bodies can be super. You have the potential inside of you right now to stand and make a positive change. Comic books aren't about fighting crime with your powers um, in tights. Comic books are about using your unique gifts to fight oppression. Our growth as a whole species is the only thing that can produce us into the future. Humanity is not shown about what you do with your powers. Humanity is shown about embracing in what's coming from the future. In the 1940s, the world was largely unexplored. Superpowers were actually given through relics that came from far off lands or mysterious cities. In the 19 cities, radioact uh, radioactivity was the cause of superpowers, and today comic books focus on genetic manipulation and technological growth. My point is, a uh, prime example would be the spider from the Spider-Man movies. Originally, he was bitten by a radioactive spider, but as the movie shown, the spider is now a genetically bred super spider. My point is, is we don't need superpowers. We need human powers. Just as Superman limits himself through his human uh, nature, just as Green Lantern rings are powered through willpower, and just as the X-Men fight for equality between all species and people, we need to step forth and better our humanity. We can no longer wait for the future, some superpower to swoop in and save us from ourselves because we are living in the future right now. While it takes invulnerability, heat vision, and ice breath to make the superman, it takes knowledge, compassion, and willpower to make the superhuman. So tell me, what's your superpower?